Warning, this show contains strong language and topics that some viewers may find offensive. Listen to discretion is advised. Regular Sam, we've got to go back to Brooklyn. We've never been to Brooklyn, second Sam. What? City. Hello, Super City, and welcome to Pokemon Go. What in the hell are you doing? Because, Andy, I was that close from getting a Kingler, and then you decided to be a knobhead, as per usual, no, I and I lost it. Start. I said we should start the show. And I said, give me five minutes. And now I've lost the Kingler. It's not real! It's not real! You do know that, right? That's not the point. It's, it's not real! You know what I've got around me now? Besides a shelter that I can't find, I've got Pidgeys and Rattatas! Because of you. That means nothing to me, I don't care. I hate you. I know you do. I hate you. Brilliant. And now I can't play it. I can't find that Kingler because... You know what? I have to do this show. And I have to talk about this show. So, right. Anyway, yes. Hello. Welcome. With me, as always, is Liam Dunn. So, Battleground was, of course, on Sunday night. Uh, yes. We are now recording this on the Monday uh, after Battleground. Yes, Simply yeah. because now, with SmackDown being on a Tuesday and having its own brand and its own storylines, we can't really cram eight hours worth of content and reviews into one hour. It doesn't give anything justice. Uh, so instead of doing the smack, uh, doing the pay-per-view and the Raw review, we've just decided we're going to do the pay-per-views and maybe we'll do Raw and SmackDown as a separate video or as written content on Supla.com. Yeah. But nevertheless, Battleground, of course, uh, was uh, last last night as of, as of this recording. And Sam says that Battleground is probably the weakest show of the year. Whether I agree with him or not, uh, I see what he means. Uh, because Battleground used to be in sort of October, and that kind of period for WWE pay-per-views was, has always been weak. I even think some uh, Survivor Series has been weak. Uh, you know, sort of between SummerSlam and Raw Rumble is a really poor pay-per-view times. Um... So, with that in mind, we now hit Battleground, and uh, we might as well start running down the, the card and think, uh, and talk about what we think. Yes! So, in the pre-show, uh, whatever the fuck they're called now, what are they called? Breezango. Oh, Breezango, or they should be called Febreze. they a copyright went, issue there. Don't care. They went one-on-one -on -one against the Usos, which Fandango and Tyler Breeze won. Mm. Um, well... I'm kind of happy. It's sad when a legitimate tag team loses to two people who have clearly been paired together because they've got nothing else to do, which is kind of what Breezango's done. But I want to think that they are actually going to put some wind behind these two. They both have been very stagnant. Uh, Tyler Breeze has probably won maybe one or two matches in singles competition since debuting on the roster. Bearing in mind, Br Tyler Breeze was a tag team champion with Roman Reigns, right? Just let that sink in for a moment. Um, and it's a shame because he was always a standout in NXT. He was one of the top heels in NXT. And then he came to the main roster. They made a big deal about it on breaking ground. And just nothing really happened for him. And it's really sad. Uh, hopefully him being with Febreze, uh, which we can say, because screw copyright, um, hopefully this will reinvigorate both of them. Because again, uh, Fandango, whilst I'm not a big fan of his gimmick... I think it's a very gimmicky gimmick, uh, overly gimmicky, kind of something you'd get in 1990s WWF, as opposed to sort of modern day-ish. Um, but nevertheless, he is good. They did have some uh, 
they did have plans for him. He did beat Chris Jericho at WrestleMania in his, I think it was his first televised match under that character. And uh, Randy Orton and Chris Jericho would talk about that later. Yes. So it was. It's it's been sad to see, and especially with uh, the Fandangoing craze that happened pretty much around the time he debuted. Yeah, but uh, that was for like a week. It was. WWE, yeah. It was because uh, WWE, in typical WWE fashion, was like, "Yeah, Fandangoing. Yeah, it's so cool. Let's talk about Fandangoing. Everybody's doing it. It's like just, just leave it, right? The reason why RKO from out of nowhere got big was because. They said it, but unintentionally. Like, it was kind of subconsciously. The same thing with John Cena. Like, when they started doing the John Cena shows up everywhere thing, like, they did a video, uh, their own parody video, and it really annoyed me, of Vince McMahon unmasking himself, and it goes, It's John Cena! And then they, 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 it's like, when WWE gets on board, that's when it stops being funny. Yeah, like, it's kind of... It, it, they kill it. Yeah, they somehow they, manage to kill it. They take good things and they ruin them. Well, they let the fans. They... Well, the thing is, the fans come up with these things, and then they try and get on board, but they don't quite get it. No, it's never organic. With them. Yeah, it's no, like... it's like it's like the things that are funny is, um, you know, you get like I saw. I know it's 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 like a re- people hate this meme, but you know, with again Pokemon Go, uh, somebody posted a video of them hatching an egg. And then out comes John Cena. That's the kind of thing that's funny. Okay, kind yeah. of, yeah. I mean, like, subjectively, but when you have Vince McMahon just unmasking himself and going, "It's John Cena," it's just, it's, it's nah. the, yeah. That's the thing. The whole th- funny thing about it is that they invade the pop culture when it's just them invading their own stuff. It's just it doesn't work as well. Anyway, that's a yeah. whole different point of view, whole different conversation. Um. Yeah, they gave the win to Breezango, which is interesting. I hope that the tag team... I'm not uh, saying that I want them to stay. Is it... Go on, go on. The problem, the problem with this all is, is that with the brand split, you have now more of a need to create teams, because it's like, oh shit, we need like 5,000 more tag teams. So you're going to have to do stuff like this and pair random people together. But... It seems daft then, on the other hand, to start splitting up the club, and I know they're a stable, and I know the Whites are a stable, but it just seems a bit daft to then, like, start splitting teams up. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, sometimes, very rarely, on occasion, pairing random people does work. Take the New Day. Like, the New Day were literally three people that they just crammed together, because Kofi wasn't doing anything, Big E wasn't really doing anything, mm. and nor was Xavier Woods. So they paired them together, and they created chicken salad out of chicken shit, and they actually did something yeah. good. Yeah. The problem and, is, is that a lot of the time say, it doesn't work. What, I was going to say the other thing as well is that going back to the whole breaking up tag team sort of thing, sometimes it does work for the best. Uh, you know, Shawn Michaels would never have become Shawn Michaels if he didn't break up with Marty Jannetty. And... Uh. With the Lucha Dragons, I understand, okay, they, the draft didn't split them up, they split themselves up, they decided to go their own ways. At least they split up the English language. <laughs> well, I was gonna, I was gonna make a joke about that, but okay, thanks for getting there before me. Um, but I can understand why WWE would want to split those two apart. They're both, uh, Hispanic, they both have big followings, uh, in the Lucha things. <laughs> um, as, you get uh, the that's reference? What, as- as Callisto would say, yeah. Lucha things. <laughs> the Lucha You're things. not wrong there. That's a thing <laughs> exactly. now. Exactly. Lucha um, things. So I can understand, especially with the cruiserweight division coming back, they'll probably want to center. Well, maybe not center it around Sin Cara, but they want Sin Cara for that. Callisto, I can see being the next Rey Mysterio. So they both have their own separate appeals. They both can bring something to their respective brands. They both have a very specific style that when they're just paired together, uh, yes, it's interesting for a tag team, but I think they needed more as sing- singles competitors at this point. So Sin Cara can go off and be in the cruiserweight division, and Kalisto can go off and do his uh, good lucha thing. Um, so he can go and do that. So Breezango, yes, they need more tag teams. I'm hoping with them having a win that this means that they're going to be... Oh, wait, is Breezango on Raw? Yeah, no, they're on SmackDown. Oh, wow. So Fuck Breezango's yeah. on SmackDown. So we don't need them as a tag team because there's no tag team championship. Oh, this, this whole thing's a mess. Brilliant. Um, that makes total sense. Yeah, that's that makes total total sense. 
Um, so we may as well move on from there. Of course, Sasha Banks took on Charlotte and Dana Brooke and her special surprise tag team partner was someone that apparently Dave Meltzer can predict, even though we all predict it. It was Bailey. It was Bailey. Bailey, of course, the NXT female John Cena, I guess, at this point, uh, made her main roster. Well, I don't want to call it a debut because the rumor is this is just a one off deal. She's still penciled in to be a part of NXT. They say that she's going to face Asuka at Brooklyn, take over Brooklyn in uh, the night before SummerSlam. So apparently, it's a one-off. Why? Um, that, because... that that crowd, that's one of the loudest pops all night. You would have thought yes. The Rock would have just turned up. Yeah, when Bailey came out, that she definitely got the biggest pop out of all yeah. the girls, at least. Of the whole night, besides Menzo Abore, of course. But, like, what the fuck? Like, just stick on SmackDown or Raw or something. I don't know. Stick on the main roster already. God damn it. Yeah, there's, there's apparently Sam said that uh, NXT needs Bailey more. And I'm not quite sure that's true at this point, especially with the draft. You know, you've got Becky Lynch, who I thought, who I think, I'm a big fan of Becky Lynch. Uh, but yes, she's we now know, on, Liam. Yes. But she's now on SmackDown. She's not got a championship to compete after. So, so Raw, uh, according to the roster... The female competitors on Raw are as follows. Alicia Fox, apparently she's still relevant. I didn't realise this. Uh, Charlotte, of course, the women's champion. Dana Brooke, Nia Jax, who got drafted. Paige, Sasha Banks, and Summer Rae. So that is, if my maths isn't bad, that is seven people. Okay. Yeah, that's seven, that's seven that's women. Seven, seven out of, people. Out of, to make one division. Okay. I don't think that's enough. Yeah, I don't... That's not enough. And the thing is, as well, it's like... So, you've only got seven people on Raw and a title. And then you've got, like, no title on SmackDown. And you have, like... Like, more, perhaps? Or... I don't know. It just seems weird. They should have just put the the women's division on one brand. They should have, yes. They shouldn't have split it up. I mean... What what are they fighting for? Ironically, because that's the theme of the battleground show. Like, what are you fighting for? Like, what? Literally, what are they fighting for? There's no, there's no purpose in it. God's sake. Yeah. And uh, the fact is, is that Bailey can't. Like, all she has left in NXT is just the face asking, and that's it. And then and everybody loses, and then you get called up. So why just call? Just call her up now. Hmm. Kevin Owens was on NXT and WWE, like the main roster. Do it with Bailey. Well, I just, I just think that there's, I don't know, I've said it before, the women should not have, they should have, I know it sounds sexist, but they should have just been drafted as a division. No. What, well, right. no, no, not even drafted, they should have just said, what will distinguish SmackDown from Raw is we'll have the women's division, and, I don't know, Raw could have the cruiserweight division. Like... They're two distinguishable things that are different. There we go. Cause because especially if you want to make SmackDown the one about wrestling. Yeah. And you want to make wrestling matter, and women's wrestling matter, duh, stick it on SmackDown. Because here's the other thing. SmackDown has six female competitors on their show. Raw has seven. You combine them, my maths isn't that great, but you combine them, that's 13. That's enough yes. for a division. Yeah, like I don't understand why they split it. That's what are you gonna? What are they going to be doing on SmackDown? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no one knows. So you've got Natalia, Naomi, even Marie, even she's graduated from NXT before Bailey. That doesn't make sense. She I don't understand. She, why can't, she... Even, she can't even wrestle. Why would it? Why? Like, okay, it's very noble that she was like, I want to go back down to NXT, right? That's very noble. I get that, but she's not been there for that long. Bailey's been there longer. And Eva Marie's been called up. Carmella, that's fine, but and Alexa Bliss, that's fine as well. That's great for them, but there's nothing for them to do on that brand, really. Yeah, you need you need something to do. That's yeah. the problem. And it's like I know we were saying we need oh, we need one WWE title, but like at least you could then in theory have like a tournament or something. I don't know. This, I fucking that's hate what I mean. This that's what I mean. Like. You know, the women should have been on one show. 
this whole draft is a fucking mess. Yeah. I, you because can tell they have no idea what they're doing. They're yeah. just making this up as they go along, day in, day out. Just fuck, just don't do it. Yeah. There's probably there other ways to make well, people care about slight, SmackDown. Yeah, this is just a slight plot hole that I, I have with WWE. Uh, Stephanie McMahon can announce that she's got the Cruiserweight division on Raw, which presumably will have a Cruiserweight championship, but then they have to draft for champions besides that? Like, why couldn't they just come to an agreement? Right, you can have the cruiserweight division, we'll have the women's division, you have the tag team division, we'll have the SPAF division, I guess, at this point. What, is the, what is the SPAF division? I don't know, you tell me, it's something you'd think of. No, uh, that's not the thing I would think of. Anyway, but the point is, is that Sasha and Bailey won, they defeated Charlotte and Dana Brooke, who, fun fact, both share the name Ashley as their first name. That's that's random fact for you there, factoid. You can take that in. Um... So yeah, um, the rumour is Bailey has not made her actual permanent debut. It was a one-off. Um, and it makes sense as well, actually, with the, the history that Sasha and Bailey have had in NXT. It was, it makes sense that they kind of bring, bring, brought Bailey up as her tag team partner. Anyone else like Lita, which Andy believed for a short time, wouldn't have made sense. No one else would have made sense for Charlotte, uh, for, for Sasha Banks to tag team with. Um, if it was anybody like Naomi or Tamina, the crowd just would have been dead. Um, so yeah, I think that was a good move, and uh, I just I just think it's time now. Charlotte might just start wrapping up her reign. Uh, yeah. I'm getting a bit bored of Charlotte. I'm not. Gonna I was lie. I was bored of Charlotte by WrestleMania. Yeah, and then she kept it. I'm like, okay. Yeah, I'm like, getting I'm getting like bored now. Like it's kind Cause of because just... she held the Divas title beforehand. Yeah. So they're treating it like it's one continuous reign, which yeah. is even worse. It's just like, I'm bored now, please give it to Sasha Banks already, for the love of God, what are you doing? Mm. Just do it tonight, just do it, just do it tonight, fuck it, I don't care, just do it, just do it, just do it, just do it. The Wyatt family defeated the tag team champions the new day. What uh, in the fucking name of fucking point was this? I I am a big fan of the new day. I love the new day. Nine times out of ten, what they do is gold. This yeah. is that one out of ten where it's not gold. It doesn't help that the whites are split. Yeah. But they won anyway. Yeah, exactly. But and the new day, like but the new even... day, the new day are still together. Yeah. But they lost. And they're the tag team champs. So theoretically speaking, right in in the law of pro wrestling, um, shouldn't the whites be? given a chance for the tag team titles because they beat the champions. But they can't, they're on a separate brand. But that's what I mean, like, it, I don't know, it's, um, it's, uh... anyway, I think this has just been an absolute waste of time. Um, and, okay, I, I just kind of want to talk about this for a second. Apparently, everyone's been saying that this is WWE's rebuttal to final deletion, right? Delete! 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 So, with that in mind, so it seems like it's a parody, okay? Yeah. But then a guy, uh, the former writer for the WWE, came out and uh, he was interviewed and he said, like, somebody asked him, how, how often do you guys kind of, like, watch TNA? And he goes, oh, barely ever. One or two guys might kind of keep up with what's going on, but no one ever cares. And he said that this wasn't a parody or a rebuttal to Final Deletion. Uh, this is something that apparently they must have planned, and it just happened to happen at the same time. Mm, I'm not buying um, that. But that doesn't stop it from just being really, really weird. And it's such a shame, yeah. because it was such an opportunity for this to be very, very, very good. Right? You've got two polar opposite personalities in these tag teams. Right? Polar opposites. But when they did the compound, I just couldn't take it seriously. And the thing that made it worse was during like the the promo package, they obviously didn't use the filter. That weird tea coffee stain shit and the weird lines all over the screen like it's from the nineteen twenties or something. I don't if they just kept the H D footage like it was, probably would have been alright. But they didn't. And this thing is stupid. Like I I get what they were trying to do. It just didn't work the way they did it. And 
the thing is, the result is pointless as well because what was what was the sense in in having a team win who were gonna inevitably split up? Hmm. What was the point? The new day are gonna be a team. What was the? Po- they're not gonna continue to feud after this because they're not on the same show. As as of today, that's it. Does, when does the actual split come into effect? Now. What the fuck was the point then? What was the fucking point? Seriously. What was the point? It's just, and the other thing as well is it's just, I know it should be, it's bad to pick, pick plot holes. I know, I know. But this one just, I, I, I can't escape it. I can't get, I can't get over it, right? It doesn't make sense because you have a video of Bray Wyatt trying to kill Xavier Woods with an axe. And yet Daniel Bryan got fired for strangling Justin Roberts with a tie. Yeah, it it doesn't make any sense. It's just, the way it was shot just wasn't WWE style. And it it stood out, it was a sore thumb. It just, there was too much going on. Like, if you want to compare it to the final deletion, you can. And I know Andy's a big critic of the final deletion. He hated it. But the fact is, is it was two guys fighting. This was six guys fighting. And I know oh, yes, the, the, the compound wasn't on uh, Battleground, but I feel like that is kind of more interesting and kind of more topical than this match. And I don't yeah. mean that nastily. Like, I think these two te- teams... Well, not so much the Wyatt. I'm not, I'm, me and Andy have both been very obvious in how much we dislike the Wyatt family. Da- um... But I, I love the new day, and I just think that this this has just been an absolute failure. I'm glad they're splitting these two teams up. Hopefully, we don't see them together again. And if we do, I just want them to do something different. There's such potential there, and they just they've wait, not they're, cracked wait, it, and it's such a shame. They're not splitting, do they? Are they? No, no, no. But what no, I mean no, is you, that you said two teams. I got confused there for a second. Yeah, no, they're splitting the oh, two right, teams, right. and one's going to Raw, one's going to SmackDown. Oh yes, yes, yes. I thought you meant like this, literally taking the new day. But I was like, no, because no, that's, they can't split them not... because they're the tag team champions. So that yeah. doesn't make sense. So it's just I don't know. I, I just don't think uh, this was good. I mean, the match was good, but inevitably it's pointless. A bit like this pay per view, kind of. Even though it was a good pay per view, it's in the grand scheme of things. Kind of pointless. Maybe they should have made it like SmackDown versus Raw for the whole pay per view. But hey, well, speaking that's of what pointless, happens when you have no idea what you're doing. Speaking of pointless, Rusev defeated Zack Ryder despite really pushing Zack to uh, to look like he was about to do it to the point where on the July Fourth show of Raw, Zack was the winner of the big like twenty thousand man tag team match that went on between yeah. Team. Uh, USA and Team International, which, by the way, had Kalisto on it, who's from Chicago. Just saying. Thought that was a little unfair on, well, yeah, little unfair, nice. unfair on him. You are clearly from Mexico! No, I'm not. I'm from <laughs> Chicago. No, you are Mexican now! I'm not Mexican. I'm, I'm an American citizen. Here's my social security number. Fuck off! It's because he um, does those good lucha things. He's, he's got he's got to be Mexican. Um, No? All right. <laughs> Anyway, well, so... then again, wait, it is from America. You'd think he'd be able to speak fucking English. Well, Andy, you're from England and you can barely conquer the language. I can actually say a sentence. Can you, though? Yes, yes, I can say a sentence. There we go. That's a sentence I can say. Not going, it's, uh, I'm going to... Hang on. Uh, uh, yes, I can say a sentence. There, that's a sentence I can say. That's not really a sentence. <laughs> 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 oh, fuck you, alright? Right, anyway, so Rusev actually beat Zack Ryder. And I know it sounds shocked because, really, on paper, Rusev would be Zack uh, Ryder. Here's but... the thing you should be shocked by. Guess who made their kind of debut last night? Oh, Sam would love it. We don't get hype, we stay hype. Fuck off. Right, okay, what is everyone's problem with Mojo? I don't know, he's just shit. That's not, that doesn't answer my question. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't answer my, just, you were talking about it's, Kalisto not being able to uh, conquer the English language, and, you, and I ask you a question, just like, he shit. Like that, no, that's not an answer. Like the problem with Mojo is that he's not that good of a wrestler. His gimmick, I don't get what it is. What is it? It's just it's, he's it's hype. Just, he's hype. No, it's just he's just had too much sugar. That's it. 
He just needs to chill the fuck out. Stop no, drinking no, coffee. No, no, no. What he is, he kind of is like, imagine the ultimate warrior, but from Jersey. That's awful. That's <laughs> <laughs> not good. There's no... That's not good. And I love how when... Like, he tried running for the save. He's like, we get, we go get hype, we stay hype. And then he hears that guy and goes, you know, bro. I thought you were lying down, like... So I got confused there for a minute. And then he just runs yeah. out and it's like... They they never... that That's the one problem I have with the theme. I actually don't mind the theme. But then you've just got Zack Ryder. And poor Zack. Their the theme, it sounds like he kind of just was forced in there because someone, like, his mum told the music producer to put his voice in there. Because it's just like, you know it, bro. Like, what? It's just ridiculous. And, and randomly, just... during the start, you just go, bro, 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 hi, bro, 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 I wrote it for funny, but bro, but no, they're fucking idiots. And this thing is awful. And oh, God, it makes me not want to watch back now. So, yeah, I was convinced with how they were pushing Zack, that they were really kind of putting him to the forefront. I yeah, thought... but that's the thing as well, like, you're pushing this guy to the fucking moon. Why did you pair him with Gooba McGooby Goob Goob Goob? Like, no, what? that's not my my thing. Like, I thought, my, I thought, I was convinced that the US title and Intercontinental title were going to swap shows last night. I was convinced, especially because rumours had come out. That they had already released the roster for who was appearing at Champions Night of not Champion of uh, what's it called Clash of Champions. Yes. There's been a rumor uh, that that the roster has already been released and Rusev was um, marketed as being the Intercontinental Champion. So I thought, right, Zack Ryder is going to win the US title. He's going to take it to SmackDown. Darren Young's going to win the Intercontinental. He's going to take it to Raw and then he's going to drop it to Rusev. That's still something that can happen. Don't forget, Clash of Champions is still two months away. That's still something that we can see. But uh, no, I thought that Zack Ryder, like I said, the way they were pushing him, he was the he was the winner. He got the win on the July Fourth show. He pinned whoever it was. I can't remember. Uh, the big US flag came down. He made a post match interview saying that he was going to go for the belt, um, and then he wore the United States colors to the ring which can also be the french and british colors i guess if you want to be political about it um he wore those to the ring and he lost and he it was quite decisive that he he lost in fact that uh well they didn't have the shortest match but they had oh no they did aside from sorry aside i'm just checking now aside from the pre-show they actually had the shortest match fantastic stuff so it was a pretty decisive win by that point but yes, so uh, anyway, we may as well move on to the next one. Yes, uh, I've lost it on my phone. Can you find it? Sami Zayn ver- versus it, yes. Kevin Owens in what, what should be what we all thought was going to be their last match. But now they're both on the same roster. Uh, of they, not. Yeah, there will probably be some sort of match at SummerSlam with some sort of stipulation. But it's really cool to see these two who are big indie darlings. They They came up from the indie scenes. Uh, and see them by themselves in a WWE ring. They don't. They're not in a face. I mean, as much as I like Cesaro, uh, and as much as I enjoy seeing them fight for the Intercontinental Title, uh, and I enjoy seeing them in ladder matches at WrestleMania, this is the first time that the two of them faced off against each other, one on one at a WWE pay per view. It was quite quite cool to see, especially how, knowing how far they had both come. Yeah, I'm actually shocked um, that. They did this so early. Um, like, oh, we saved this for Mania or something. SummerSlam. Uh, I wouldn't have saved it for Mania. I think that's a bit I think that's a bit much. They're not rocking Austin here, mate. Anyway, so, I mean, the match was phenomenal. And uh, I would have saved it for WrestleMania and I would have demoted Roman Reigns to the first match on Superstars. Yeah, nice one, Andy. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, but no, um, the match was really good, as expected. There's mm-hmm. one thing that kind of went a bit wrong, and I'm not quite sure why it went wrong. But Sami Zayn did the, uh, like, kind of jump up, and then you kind of sit on the top rope, and then do a moonsault. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened, but he didn't quite get the elevation, or the spring, or whatever it is. And he nearly landed on his fucking head. Oh, so he did a Brock Lesnar. Yeah, he nearly landed on the top of his head on the ring apron, and he nearly died. Cool, so, geez. that's terrifying. Um, But no, I mean, the, the match was really good. The ending was well done, because it's like, like Sami Zayn's like, looking at him, and you think he's got an ounce of compassion, which is like, 
don't, I don't want to, I don't, don't want to do this anymore. Fuck it! Kick him in the head! And he kicks him in the head, and that's, that's the end of that one. They're very good, I think, because uh, they are close friends in real life, and I think it show, shows through in their match. No, yeah. Um, Owens is on, is on, on, on fire, on, on lit, on point. Well, I would actually disagree. I don't think he's been doing as well as you're saying that he has. I mean, the, he's like, why don't you just stay that's down? That's such an amazing bloody impression. What, my, my impression? Yeah, I didn't realise he was from up north. <laughs> what? Why don't you stay? I can't do Kevin Owens' impression. No, yeah, well, here's his, his a little tip in life. Yeah. I'm going to give you this one for free, Andy. Okay, right? what is it? If you can't do an impression, yeah. don't do an impression. Why didn't you not tell me that eight years ago? I thought it was obvious, to be honest. But it wasn't obvious! So, um, okay, so yeah, I, I won't do that impression again. But, um, yeah, the, the, I thought the match was well done. They told mm-hmm. a good story. Everything was great. Yes. So, moving on to the fifth match of the night, fifth of seven, Natalia versus Becky Lynch. I skip this because I don't give a fuck about Natalia. But Becky, just because you have a weird crush on her does not mean that I have. Come on, it's that accent and that hair and just everything. Yes, granted. There you go. But I don't give a fuck about Natalia. But um, okay, I can't really. Argue against that, like, just I would, I what, I watched it for Becky. That's the only reason, and I'm annoyed with how she keeps losing every match she's in. It makes you wonder why they called her up. It does. She's kind of turning into Tyler Breeze a little bit, but because they have so few female wrestlers, that she gets used more. And yes, she was the first female pick on SmackDown. Good for her, obviously, but. She she's ne- like I don't think she's won a pay per view match. I don't. She might have done. Well, I can't remember. But the, I mean, that's the thing. The fact that even if she has, you can't even remember. Probably just shows how fucking in indes- Oh, she hasn't. She's zero for six. There you go. Thank you, Sam. Fuck. Sam's Sam's listening to us as we record this. Like I said, she's not won a pay per view match, right? Um, and it's such a shame. She's she could be a big big star uh, Natalia I feel like they've dropped the ball on her and I feel like it's a bit too late like she's she's towards the tail end of her career she's been here since what 2008 now forever yeah she's been here she's I think a song from Alicia Fox which is scary she's the longest uh, serving diva sorry women's wrestler that's that's that diva's dead wow diva's dead politically incorrect um and it's it you know I feel like Natalia's that they've dropped the ball, they've missed her, she should have left, she should have moved somewhere else, she could have done better somewhere else. Maybe not TNA, because it's TNA. Um, but, no, um, Becky could be, especially with her being the first pick for SmackDown, she could be the, the face of the women's division on SmackDown, if you're going to have a split division. And having her lose, especially when she's the first pick, and you have her lose... It just doesn't work for me. And yeah. we'll talk about uh, the the triple threat match in a bit because of uh, Dean Ambrose beating Seth Rollins, who was the first pick overall. We'll talk about that and why that gets given a pass. Um, but I mean, wasn't it? I don't even. Right, no, she was picked on the show. She wasn't saved for the network. But uh, Natalia, I mean, her her being drafted wasn't saved for the network. But it doesn't make sense. Why is Becky the first pick, but she keeps constantly losing? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. And I kind of just want her to do something, please. Yes. Speaking of wanting people to do stuff, the sixth match of the night, Miz defeated... Well, not defeated. It was a double double disqualification. Uh, Miz retained the Intercontinental title over Darren Young, but he did not necessarily win. Um, and it all kind of came about... When Marie slapped Bob Backlund after claiming that Backlund had pushed her, so Miz pushed Backlund, which led to him, uh, which applied, uh, uh, I'm getting my words mixed up, which led to Young applying the chick, uh, the cross-faced chicken wing on Miz until the referees had to pull uh, the Young off Miz and it ended in a double disqualification. Great. This is another match I skipped. I can tell. You're not a big fan of any of these people, are you? 
like I don't I don't care about this make down young great again. Do not care. Do not give a damn. The penultimate match of the night, John Cena, Enzo Amore and Big Cass took on the club. Enzo Amore is basically Jesus. Yeah, Andy messaged me, he was like, oh my god, Enzo Amore is fucking amazing. He is fucking amazing. He's literally probably the best person on the microphone in the company right now. He's he's the greatest thing ever. If you've got John Cena just going, like, that's it, you've, you've made it. Congratulations, you are basically wrestling Jesus, or oh God. However... Andy like? said that he is the next rock. Okay, I'm, I meant on the, on, the, on the mic. On the mic, yes. Uh, because I thought you meant in general, and I'm like, no. No, he, he's... He's great. He's the greatest thing ever. Yes, he's very, right very, very good, especially on the microphone. Um, but... And I, I, it sounds bad, because I don't want to sound like WWE here, but do you think that his size will play a factor into his success. Vince likes people who can talk. That, that's a thing we've established, right? Like, he likes You talking. say that, but Roman Reigns. Yeah, I know. You say that, but Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but he likes... Yeah, but that's, that's what I was saying on you the say live that, show. You say that, but he I likes saying, Great Carly at one point. What I was saying on the live point. show was... He liked Great Carly at one point. Yeah, Great Carly likes... was a world champion. Yeah, but he likes talking for some reason. Like, he has this obsession. Even if you can't talk, he'll make you talk. Don't know why. Who knows? But Enzo Amore has got the gift of the gab, right? He can actually talk. So Vince is probably like, this is fucking great. And Vince has that obsession with people talking. He made Brock Lesnar talk when he came back. That was fucking abysmal. So they had to bring in Paul fucking Heyman. Hmm. Um, Clalisto, clear example, can't structure a sentence. Um, Pop kettle black, hello. Shut up. Roman Reigns, again, shouldn't be talking. Goldberg, when he came in back in the day, shouldn't have spoken at all, because he didn't fucking WCW that much. He just said, you're next, or someone's next. Spear, crush, jackhammer, that's it. Um... And I, I mean, Enzo's got the potential to be great. Mm. I don't know. I don't know where that glass ceiling will be because, like me, he's a very short man. So I don't know. But where it is, Vince likes tall too. That's the thing he likes. Even though you could be really shit. And and ironically, they were like, Big Cass. I remember JBL going, Big Cass. Michael's gonna be the future. Like what? You just had a guy get fucking cheered. Like, the loudest reaction I've ever heard since The Rock, and you're now going on about the big guy? What? Yeah, but that's the thing. You say that Vince McMahon likes talkers, but he also has a, uh, a predis... Dis- uh, I know what I'm trying to say about him. That's it. Uh, to very large fellows. He does like very large men. He likes large things. Vince likes big, big things. He does. Like, you remember that? He likes to look at big things. Like, back in the day, like, with, when he was, like, kind of having that affair with Trish Stratus. Yeah. He was like, big, voluptuous breasts. Like, yeah. voluptuous isn't a word I would use to describe tits. Like, what? They're not, it's not like fucking, I don't know, going to KFC or something. Like, what are you, what are you on? Well, hang on, what? I, what? No, voluptuous is definitely what you use. You oh no, use I used the word chicken. succulent. That was oh. it, succulent. <laughs> This is why I have a fucking streak. <laughs> oh, that voluptuous KFC chicken. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was just going to like hide my face because I'm so embarrassed. Right, no. I There's meant to say succulent. voluptuous chicken I... wings there. I meant succulent. <laughs> Anywho... <laughs> Sam, this is probably a good time right now to put what the streak is, and then just put, well, duh. Like, oh shit. You can tell he's got one, because he doesn't even know what right fucking word to use to fucking describe. Anyway, so that was that was a match that happened, and <laughs> unlike the Wyatt here. family uh, winning, they actually did the right thing, because the club is splitting up. So. Chicken. Shut up! I meant succulent! So, that's that's... I <laughs> that was a moment of the year, wasn't it? That's oh amazing. god, I'm not gonna do this. There's so much stuff there with Saltly. 
<laughs> I am never going to let this down. Oh my god, that's two in a row. That's two in a row. Right, anyway, so with the uh, the, I believe, um, the club lost their last match together. Although, Makes uh, sense. Well, I say the club. The club technically is our uh, Gallows and Anderson. Uh, so they're still together. But AJ is going off. Um, let's go into speculation just before we continue with the rest of the card. Of course, the main club of Anderson and Gallows is going to be on Raw with, of course, the original founder, none other than Prince Devitt, a.k.a. Finn, I'm not going to say his surname because I get it wrong every time. Bala. There you go. What do uh, you say? Look, some people have issues with certain words in the English language. I didn't make fun of you. Well, I did, but that's but not no, You always make fun of me! I can't say the word elbow! You always fucking do that! No, my favourite now is Saltly. That's my personal favourite. What is Saltly? When did I say Saltly? You tried to spell out Salty and you spelled Saltly. It's in the last episode if you want to go and watch it. Uh, I may have, you know, drunk too much and forgot. Brilliant. Um, so, of course, like I said, Finn, Finn's going to Raw. The the club, Carl Anderson, is also, I believe he's an original member, Carl Anderson? Yes. Yep. And Luke Gallows is also going over there. AJ Styles is going to SmackDown. But you've got, th- you've got at least two of the founding members now of the club, or the Bullet Club, on the same show. What do you think? I really hope that if they do put Finn with the club, they don't do an AJ Styles storyline that they just did. Like, oh, but Finn doesn't want the club's help. Oh, he'll turn if it's fake. All the no, I, 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 we discussed this on the live show. I don't. I, Finn has just become his own character now to the point where I don't think he needs the club. I okay, fair enough. But I think they will do something. Yeah. I think just I think just for the sort of like the the little Easter egg, the little wink, there'll be a backstage interaction between them. To, uh, yeah, tonight on Raw. Sure, why not? But, but like, it's a full-time thing, no. But what do you think with Finn's going to do? I think he's going to be a big player on Raw, uh, especially if he was like picked in the first round. I think they've got big things for him. They're not going to pick him and then just stick him with the cruiserweights. Although I think he'll do well. I think he can help elevate the cruiserweight division. I don't think that he will be uh, the big. I, I think he will eventually be the big uh, one of the big guys. In the he needs to be. Show. He needs to be a main. Event guy ASAP. So brilliant. So of course, Randy Orton and Chris Jericho on uh, did the highlight reel. Um, and I've missed this. I haven't seen this. So may as well. Uh, did you watch okay. it? Yes, I did. So basically, Chris Jericho just does his usual stick, which is tired and boring. And fuck you, Squared Circle, so cool Reddit needs shit. Um, and basically, like it just gets to the point where. Jericho's like, you're just gonna get your head kicked in. You're gonna lose. You're gonna, you're gonna try and RKO me out of nowhere, then are you? How about now? How about now? Or how about now? And then, Orton's just like, yep, I will beat Brock because, you know, I'm not scared of Brock Lesnar and I'm, I'm gonna beat him. No enhancement needed. And literally drops the mic. Mm. Oh shit! Which you know wasn't like. Woo! He said he was on roids. Um. So yeah. Then he okay, Chris Jericho. Right, go get by. I'm gonna go see you later. I don't really care. I'm gonna get the fuck up out of here. This shit, I'm out. We might as well talk about the main event then. Alrighty, main event was solid, rock solid. And the best yes. part is, everyone for would they? Would they actually put the belt on Roman? That was everyone's fear. That was my fear. I thought the next best option would be put it on Rollins. If you had to take it off Ambrose, might as well put it on the number one draft pick, right? But thankfully, they did the right thing. And they did do the, the, the right thing. And it's very rare, and it's sad that we have to say they do. it's very rare that they do the right mm-hmm. thing. But they did do the right thing. Because... We've always said on this show, and I think it's no secret, I think a lot of people would agree that Dean Ambrose has been booked, booked the pool, the poorest mm. out of all of the mm. former Shield members. Absolutely. Um, you know, when you had Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns fighting over the WWE Championship for over a year, Dean Ambrose was losing matches with the Intercontinental title on the line. Right. Um, he was booked the poorest, and it's a shame because whilst I think he's better than Roman and probably on par with Seth, I think Dean mm. has the better mic skills out of all of them. In my personal opinion, I think yes. he's yes, I think I he's got he's the strongest character out of all three of them. 
Yes. Um, again, that's just my personal opinion. I'm sure other people would say that Seth is better on the mic or Seth has a better character. But for me, I really like Dean Ambrose. I like his character as the uh, lunatic fringe. He's kind of like a modern day Mankind. He's kind of like a PG Mankind, but not done badly. Do you yes. know what I mean? Yes, I know exactly what you mean. There are heavy influences <clears throat> by Mick Foley and Dean Ambrose as a whole, so I'm yeah. happy to see that comparison being made. Yes. So, uh, I'm glad that they didn't make him a paper champion, that they mm. kept with him as being the champion. Um, but, I mean, I've had this discussion with Andy. There's a lot of unanswered questions as to what's going to go on with the championships. I'm highly suspicious that they are going to make a second championship for Raw uh, because they've made a big deal that the champion is going to be on SmackDown. Like, they've never said that the WWE title will be defended on both. They've never said that. That's why the ending was that everyone was at ringside. SmackDown held Dean Ambrose up like he was a... Like, like the Usos held him up like he was a Samoan family member. Yeah, Dean Ambrose is now their cousin because Roman yeah. Reigns has just been put the fuck down. Yeah. Like, two clean losses on pay-per-view straight. Well, I'll, what, I'll talk about that in a minute. But, that's what uh, the policy does to you. But yeah, the uh, Dean Anoa'i guy, <laughs> as we now refer to him. He's, uh, no, I'm glad. But yeah, I'm highly suspicious that what is now going to happen is that Seth and Roman are going to feud over the new Raw Championship, which may or may not be a return of the big gold belt. Um, I mean, at this point, I don't know what they could call it besides the World Heavyweight Championship and it being the big gold belt because mm. you can't have like the Raw Championship. It doesn't make sense. Well, you could call it the television title, but technically all of them are television titles. So Yeah, yeah. The, the WWE Network Champion who's just done the network. That's basically the internet champion. Yeah, and we saw how far Zack Ryder went with that. Mm. Um... So yeah, I can see that happening. I feel like Steph is going to come out and say that Raw will crown a world champion at SummerSlam and it will be between Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns and that is going to be the feud going into SummerSlam. But in terms of the WWE Championship, that is going to be on SmackDown, uh, which is good because I feel like that's the, sh the big championship. SmackDown needs all the help they can get at this point. Oh yes. For the first time in 13 years, SmackDown beat Raw in the, in the ratings. Um, which is fantastic news for SmackDown, and it shows that Raw really needs to... I really hope that this whole bringing a competition, I hope that's legitimate. I really hope that is a legitimate thing. Mm -hmm. I hope that isn't just a storyline thing. I really hope that SmackDown is like, right, Raw's doing this, we need to do this. Like, I really want them to be actually competitive. Um, anyway, that's a different matter. So, the WWE Championship is on SmackDown. I feel like they need it. Um, I would have preferred... Something like the Women's Championship or the Tag Team Championship or heck, even the Cruiserweight division that's coming back. I would have preferred for that to be on SmackDown because right now, Raw has pretty much all the divisions except like the main one. Uh, it has the Tag Team division, the Women's division and the Cruiserweight division. And I understand they have three hours which is more than SmackDown, but SmackDown doesn't, like there's, there's no real identity there at the moment except for being the WWE Championship, the home of the WWE Championship. Right. Um, but nevertheless, Dean is seems to be being pushed as a big uh, uh, as a big star, which is very very good. And um, yeah, the match was pretty impressive. I was very very proud uh, proud of it. I wasn't in it. Uh, I was very I was impressed proud by of my it. children. I was I was very impressed with it because uh, the thing about triple threats is that you can either get a really amazing triple threat or you can get a really bad triple threat. There's not like. It's very rare that you get one that's kind of in the middle, but typically triple threats tend to fall into being a, either very, very good or quite poor. And that's just simply with the amount of mechanics going on. You look at some of the best triple threats like Benoit, sorry, Stevie Richards, Thank Shawn you. Michaels, Triple H at WrestleMania, mm -hmm. uh, Angle, Stevie Richards, Jericho at WrestleMania 2000, mm -hmm. or heck, even AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, and Christopher Daniels in TNA during its heyday. The Rumble triple threat from 2015. Yeah. And the thing is, is what happens is that you need a mix of styles, but a mix of styles that can work well together. Mm. And I think this this was, uh, I think this delivered. Oh, absolutely. Bear in mind that this was probably the most anticipated triple threat match in history. People have been clamoring for this match for literally two years. Ever yeah. since the Shield broke up, everyone has been wanting them to face each other. And finally, yeah. they did it on Battleground. Mm. Well, you know what? I kind of, I think... They did it simply because of the name of the pay-per-view. I think that kind of makes sense. It's been t it's been a match two years in the making. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So they'll settle it on the battleground. And I, uh, I think you mentioned it earlier with Andy, you alluded to my branding of Battleground as typically the worst pay-per-view of the WWE year. Yeah, and I only, I only dispute that because I think that pretty much all the pay-per-views between, say, September to December are pretty bad. I mean, I can't argue or deny that even, because it varies with every year. But I always find consistently Battleground has always been either disappointing or terrible or forget forgettable. See, I think that of pretty much all the pay-per-views in the latter half of the year. See, I, I think, I, I, think I think Survivor Series has its own identity, and then you have TLC, mm. Hell in a Cell. They're all somewhat memorable because of that, but Battleground? Mm. What makes Battleground its own thing? What identity See, does it have? I, I, I disagree. I feel, I feel... When feel do they I, not do that? No, I disagree. I feel... When is that not a thing that they do? When, when, right. When was the last big moment on, in, some, uh, in Survivor Series? What was the last big moment? There you go. Right? I feel um, like it's... Like, no, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on. 2014, 2014, Sting came back. Okay, one time. <laughs> yes, he came back one time. Like, what, what? What's your point? Well, the Undertaker cost Brock Lesnar his championship match in uh, 2015 at a random pay-per-view. I can't remember which one it was. Battleground. It was it Battleground? Yeah. Well, there you go. What's your point? Well, it doesn't mean that it, 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 excuse, it doesn't make Battleground like a big pay-per-view just because The Undertaker returned. Survivor Series is a big pay-per-view anyway. I've never seen it as a big pay-per-view. I just WWE do. Big... Yeah, and I don't... I, I, they only call it that because it's one of the oldest. That makes it a big deal. Mm, Battleground, I mean, how long has that been around? Like, since 2013? If that. If that. Yeah. 2013, I believe it, made its debut. Right. And since then, well, it's been lackluster. But now, it's been consistently good. Except for the fuck finish to the IC match and Becky Metallia, I think this pay-per-view has been solid. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, it was a very good pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think that's good. I think they've actually delivered quite a few good pay-per-views in a row, to be honest. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's, um, it's been pretty good lately. Ever since, ever since WrestleMania, WrestleMania itself was questionable but since yeah. then the quality's been improving payback was good extreme rules was good money in the bank was good battleground mm. has been great i have high hopes for SummerSlam. yeah i think I, I don't know what it is but after wrestlemania and just how bad that was mm. uh, it's not it even that it was bad it's but everything that happened at wrestlemania at least 24 hours later if not a week later was made pointless and irrelevant yeah no i still say it was bad fair enough um but yeah, no, I mean, you look at AJ versus Roman, they surprisingly connected very, very well together. Oh, yes. Um, and then Money in the Bank is always exciting, always good. I've, ve I've very rarely seen a very bad Money in the Bank pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think it was overall very, very good. Uh, so we may as well start looking at the comments, because this is something that we should have done earlier. Absolutely. We We're pros here, can you not tell? Everybody's talking at me. So we got a comment here from uh, Bullet Club vs. The Shield who says, Could you guys imagine Roman Reigns as a heel, ending The Undertaker's career at WrestleMania 33, praise for son, maybe becoming the biggest heel in history? Now he addresses Andy here saying, Shut up. That would be a perfect way to get a majority of hardcore fans to hate him. Good point. Only thing I will say is that a majority of hardcore fans hate him anyway. Yeah, they hate him regardless. This this suspension, I think, was the final nail in the coffin. And the fact yeah. that Amber has pinned Roman clean <clears throat> at Battleground, it, it cements the fact that Vince has... He's either given up entirely on Roman Reigns in the main event, that remains to be seen, or he's he's been put off temporarily. Well, here's, here's the thing. I've... Uh... Because obviously Roman, who's supposed to be being built as the next big guy for the company, mm -hmm. he was picked in the second round, not even the first round. Yeah. Um... And here's the thing, there's been a report going around that Vince was pretty much personally disappointed with Roman because he's been mm. given the ball of this opportunity to be the next big guy. Yeah. And not only is he not connecting with the fans, he's not really trying to do anything to connect with the fans. He's been a little... I found Roman to be a little uh, stuck up with that. Mm. Like, I can understand that maybe he's trying to get a joke out of it, but he's got mugs that says uh, Smarks Tears. <laughs> that was brilliant, though, to be fair. Um, 
and all he does is he just comes out and he just goes, I'm not the bad guy, I'm not the good guy, I'm the guy. Now, he, he doesn't seem like he's really trying. Well, uh, but maybe at this point he's just a. The thing, he, the thing about that is, is that you got to remember that's only been happening since WrestleMania. But and the fact is that before that, he was pushed as this like underdog babyface. Well, when, yeah. when he's clearly not an underdog, he's a big dog, as they have called him. But that whole not a good guy, not a bad guy, the guy gimmick was a tweener gimmick, and, and it's the other meant thing to, as well. It's meant to make him come off as a smug dick because what, what, he is a smug dick what, i think they the succeeded thing, hang on, with that hang on the other thing as well is that he's very much like it's one versus all roman reigns against the world but i'll have the usos come out and help me <laughs> and i'll have dean ambrose be my sidekick for months yeah, and, and so it's not it's not it's not roman reigns versus the world it's roman reigns and his entourage roman reigns and friends versus the yeah world. roman reigns in the mystery machine <laughs> it's basically you know? scooby-doo but with instead of a giant dog it's roman reigns there you go, and that's what it is. Dean yeah. Ambrose is shaggy. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, oh, Zoinks it's... Roman Goobers! That's what he says. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I I feel like... Uh, anyway, going back to this 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 thing, uh, Vince was uh, uh, disappointed. Mm. And it says... Uh, that, again, it's just a rumour. We don't work for the WWE. We have no connection Wait, we don't? to anyone backstage. No, we don't, surprisingly. We don't. Oh, shit. Although, I feel like they steal our ideas, because I said they should make a Cruiserweight division out of this Cruiserweight Classic, and they've done it. So, I feel like they do listen to this and they still are it is. Um, anyway, the thing is is that apparently Vince was upset with this and Roman, at least for now, is not being considered the top guy. He's going to be considered as one of, mm-hmm. but he's not going to be the top guy. Which begs the question, who is the top guy? Seth Rollins. Agreed. If not Seth Ambrose, Rollins. it's Rollins. I can see the thing is I see Rollins, 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 Rollins. What? No, uh, I see Rollins as kind of The Rock mm. and Dean Ambrose as Stone Cold. If we have mm. to make comparisons to other eras, no, I agree with that. Yeah, that's the way I see it. You can see Seth, Seth's kind of the pretty boy uh, heel with with the, the the authority behind him, with the the, the managers behind him. Whereas Dean Ambrose, like Stone Cold, just doesn't care. Doesn't care who you are. Doesn't care what you do in your job. Like, he wants to be the top and he will go through anyone uh, who stands in his way. Exactly. So, and they were both the tops of their uh, eras, the Rock and Austin, with those particular um, character traits. And I feel like that's what it it will be with this. Absolutely. But uh, going back to this comment of him ending The Undertaker's career at WrestleMania 33, praise the sun. I think that would be unnecessary, given that everybody already hates him enough. You don't need to add more fuel to the fire. You should instead give that that privilege, almost, of ending the Undertaker's career to somebody else. Mm. Who is another matter entirely, but not Roman. Anyone but no. you, Roman. Moving Agreed. on. We got Agreed. John Karajanis, who says, Do you think that TNA could still be alive by the end of the year? If a cockroach can survive nuclear war, I think TNA can survive another year. You have doubts. I do, and I'll tell you why. That's why I went silent, because I have doubts. Mm. For eight years, me and Andy have done this show as a hobby. Right? We do this show not to make money. We Although don't? We do, ha- we, we do have it monetized. What the fuck are we doing here? We do this show because we love wrestling, and we love talking about wrestling. We love interacting with people who like wrestling as well. This is true. But for eight years... It's been pretty much a running gag in the Supla that we, we've predicted that TNA will not make it to the end of the year. And each year we've been proven wrong. And that was kind of the point of the running joke, that we were proven wrong. And despite not liking TNA, we never want TNA really to go out of business because it provides an alternative. People like Drew Galloway can make their name there. Lashley, whilst I'm not a big fan of his, has become a big name for TNA. However... Never in the past eight years, and never in the past 14 years of TNA's existence, have we been so close to TNA literally going out of business, to the point where one of their pay-per-views nearly didn't get done because they ran out of funding. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a very good point. And I know every year it gets worse. When we think it can't get any more rock bottom, it goes through the floor for TNA. But... 
I think, as weird as it may be to say, the final deletion has saved I was me. literally about to say right. that. With, if not for the final deletion, I would almost guarantee that they would be out of business before the end of the year, if not midway through 2017, right? The f but yeah. because they have all of these new eyes on the product, for better or for worse, according to Andy, but the fact is, people enjoy this final deletion garbage. They enjoy this nonsense. They enjoy Matt Hardy talking to drones with holograms. They enjoy Jeff Hardy going out and attacking inanimate objects for no reason. People love this. People enjoy seeing this. Because it's so bad, it's good. And I know that Andy fails to grasp that concept, but if people enjoy watching it, more power to them, and more power to TNA for making it. And if it gets more eyes on the product, then that's good. That's the first time they've done that since, I don't know, forever. Since the Hogan yeah. era. I think the last time they really got any big eyes on the product was when Hogan first came in. And then they saw how terrible that all was, and they got the fuck out, and they haven't come back until now. Yeah. Even AJ Styles and Stone Cold's podcast said when Hogan came in, that was that was the decline for TNA. That like was. Everything. TNA was on the up and up, and then they brought in Hogan, and they brought in Bischoff, mm. and that is what started to kill it. Yep. Because they came in and changed everything. But that's not the point. point is, will TNA survive? Before the final deletion, I would have said there's a high... Like, I would have believed that there is a chance that it wouldn't survive. Absolutely. The final deletion, whether you love it, or whether you hate it, it has brought new eyes to a product. Here's an, it, the best example, and I was talking about this earlier on the show with Andy, mm. and me and Sam just joked about it now. Let's take Pokemon for an example. Now, T oh, now Pokemon, Pokemon has never been quite to the problems that TNA has. Like Pokemon's never been, uh, it's never been un. Well, yeah, okay. There was a time when I was a kid where it was unpopular, but there's always been a fan base for it. Oh yes, and it's it's slowly been getting bigger and bigger. And uh, but now, with the release of Pokemon Go, it's got to the point where it Pokemon's pretty much as big as it was when I was a kid. When I yes, I am a Gen One er, Sam. Ugh. I was there from the beginning, um, right. and it was massive back then. And it's kind of gone back to that now. And I would, I would venture, I guess, and say it's bigger than it ever was. Very people, I know people who have had zero interest in Pokemon for all of its existence, and they are now playing it because of really? this goddamn app. My mother, my mother is playing this game. She doesn't do video games. She does Candy Crush. Brilliant. For years and years, never had any interest in one of my big interests, which is Pokemon. Mm. And now I have to teach her how to catch him. But Weird. my point is, my point is, is that. Pokemon Go has brought a lot of eyes back onto a product that people have kind of, I wouldn't say forgotten about, but wasn't quite as watched, wasn't quite as beloved as it was. It was just in a it state of existence. It wasn't yeah. It wasn't hated upon, people enjoyed it still, but it wasn't a forefront in popular culture. Yeah. Um, like, whenever pe people talked about the Pokemon games, they were talking about, uh, kind of like, again with TNA, they talked about the heyday, like the Gen 1s, the Gen 2s, Whereas we talk about the 2005s, the 2004s of TNA. And then something like this comes along and suddenly people are interested again. Mm. It brings, like, I haven't watched an episode of TNA properly in a very, very long time until the final deletion. Yeah. Until the final deletion. And that's something that I would, like, it's brought, whether you like it or not, it's brought a lot of uh, eyes back to the product. It has. And at the end of the day, whether it's good, whether it's bad, all Spike, uh, not Spike TV, they're not Spike TV anymore, all Pop C is that the ratings have improved, mm -hmm. which means that clearly people are watching it, which means that they can sell more ad revenue on it, and it can turn a profit. Maybe not immediately, but it has hope. Um, so yeah, I think it will last till the end of the year. Now, 2017... We'll have to wait and see. There's always something. Like I say, we never think it can get any worse, but they prove us wrong every single time. Well, that's what I mean. I mean, me and Sam, again, we've spoken and we've said that they're kind of... The public uh, deletion is kind of just pushing it a bit too far. Like, mm, I wouldn't say too far. It's continuing the natural story. You can't just end it with the final deletion, despite the title being a final deletion. They're still... Still well, no, I think you can, because it's called there. the final deletion. Well, yes, but in terms of the story, what little there is, there's still a continuation to be seen there. 
and I think they're going to keep milking it for what it's worth until people do start to hate it, and then they finally die. Everybody's talking at me. You can go to Supla.com and you can find a lot of things. We're going to be having a lot of more content on the website now, and it's going to be great. Stay tuned to keep your eyes peeled. We have MP3 downloads of this show and the broadcast, and we have our Hall of Fame. Supla.com forward slash HOF. You can also find Speaking us on... Of... Blah, 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 blah. Speaking of more content, mm. make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We will be putting out brand new stuff in roughly about a month or so. Something big is happening in the Supla world. We're excited about it, and we hope you are too. So expect more content of varying uh, different topics and varieties. More videos coming your way. You can also you find us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Same name as everywhere else. And if you missed anything, it's going to be down there. Right there. In the description, boy! So that was Battleground. We got SummerSlam. Back to Brooklyn coming up. I'm excited. <laughs> what are you doing? I thought we finished. I have been Sam Brooks. I can't find this fucking Kingler again. That's Liam. Liam Dunn. Gen 1 a dickhead. And we've also been joined by Andy. But he ran away. Because he... He clearly... He didn't want to spend another minute with this man. With this... With this delusional Pokemon trainer. How are you doing? Fuck you. How, are you how are you catching all of your job at Pokemon? Fuck you. Do you want to go outside? Do you want to go do that outside? There's no Pokemon around here! Showed up in my house.